In this video, we're going to be configuring Remote Access VPN on an ASA using Certificate Authentication. The reason why this might be important to you is that you might want to limit VPN access to only corporate devices that have been issued a user certificate. This would be a way to limit VPN access to only those devices. You can configure Certificate Authentication by itself, or even have a second form of authentication using a AAA server like ICE. So let's start out by using the ASDM wizard to create a basic AnyConnect VPN configuration. I'm going to name this profile ASAV-Test-VPN, and my VPN access interface is going to be inside for this test, since that's where my test client is. In most cases, though, they'll, it'll probably be your outside interface in production. On this screen, I'm going to uncheck the box for IPsec and just leave SSL. I could configure the certificate authentication here, but I'm going to walk through those steps individually once I'm done setting up the basic configuration. I already have my VPN head end package uploaded here, so I'm just going to click Next. For authentication methods, I'll just leave this local for now and click Next. And once again, I'll go ahead and click Next again. For the VPN pool, I'm going to click New and create a new pool of IP addresses for use with the VPN clients. My pool will be with the starting IP address of 10.1.30.1 and the ending IP address of 10.1.30.50 with a slash 24. Here I'll add my domain name of securitydemo.net and then click Next. I'll go ahead and click Next through here. And now I'll go ahead and finish this wizard so I can go ahead and push the configuration changes to the ASA by clicking Apply. So now that we have a bare bones configuration of Remote Access VPN, let's go through what we're going to be configuring next by swinging over to my VPN client. So let's go ahead and pull up the Microsoft Management Console and add the certificate snap in to view all the certificates on this computer. Under the Personal Certificate folder, I have a user certificate that's been issued using my AD Group policy. Since I know only domain joined computers will get this certificate, I want to use it as authentication for both myself as a user and that this is a corporate device. To do this, we're going to have to swing back to the ASDM. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to add the root certificate to the Certificate Authority Store of the ASA. So I'm going to have to get the root certificate. To do so, I'm going to pull up my Active Directory Certificate Services in my browser and go to Download a CA Certificate. I'm going to choose Base64 and download the CA Certificate. After doing so, let's swing back to the ASA. We're going to install it under Remote Access, Certificate Management, and CA Certificates on the left-hand side. I'm going to click Add. And let's give it a name of ad-ca-root. And let's go ahead and install that certificate. Next, we're going to install an identity certificate by clicking on Identity Certificates on the left-hand pane. We're going to have to create a Certificate Signing Request, or CSR for short, to create the certificate. I'll start out by clicking Add. I'm going to name this trust point asav-vpn.cert and then we'll choose the Add a New Identity Certificate radio button. I can either use the default RSA key for this or create my own by clicking New. So I'll go ahead and name this key pair asav-vpn and I'll click Generate Now. The certificate signing request will be pre-filled with a common name but we can click Select and add more fields if we wish to. If we wanted to add additional certificate parameters, such as a fully qualified domain name, IP address, and so on for this ASA, we can do so under the Advanced Settings. I'll go ahead and fill in the fully qualified domain name and IP address of the interface. The enrollment mode will be set to Manual. Of course, if you have a SEP server, you can also configure it to pull right from there as well. So let's click OK and then Add Certificate. Now the ASA is going to ask us to save the CSR file. I'll just save it locally on my PC. Now that that's been completed, I'll pull up the CSR in Notepad so I can use it to create a certificate. Let's go ahead and copy that whole certificate request. 
I'm going to go back to my Certificate Services page and perform an advanced certificate request. I'll be using the pre-filled web server certificate template and copy the CSR right in there to the requested field. Then we'll download it as a Base64 encoded certificate. And going back to my ASA, I'll click Install under Identity Certificates. And I'll just upload that certificate I just created. Now that we've installed that certificate, we can see more details about it, such as attributes, expiration date, associated trust points, and so on. Let's expand Network Client Access in the left-hand pane and click on Any Connect Connection Profile. I'm going to edit the ASAV-Test-VPN profile in the bottom. For the profile configuration, I'm going to change the authentication method from AAA to Certificate Only. This should allow us to start accepting certificate-based authentication for remote access VPN. However, what if I want to identify the user with the certificate? To do so, we'll want to perform some username mapping based on a field we define in the certificate. To do so, let's expand Advanced on the left-hand pane and go to Authentication. The default setting is to map to common name and organization name in the certificate. Since I know my certificates are all issued with a UPN of the username, I'm going to define it here. First, I'll remove the secondary field, and then I'll scroll down in the, the primary field to UPN. After that's done, that should be all I need to configure for now, so I'll click OK. And then I'll click Apply to apply these settings. The next thing I'm going to do is assign that identity certificate we installed to my VPN interface. By default, the ASA uses self-signed certificates for all incoming SSL connections, and these will cause certificate warnings. To change that, I'm going to go ahead and SSH to the ASA and use the SSL Trust Point ASA V VPN Cert Inside command. This will assign the certificate to the inside interface. Again, I probably wouldn't be using the inside interface in production. That'll probably be your outside interface. But since this is just labbing, I'm using inside for now. Now let's swing over to our VPN client. We're going to be logging in like we're a new user. I'm going to open up a browser and navigate to the fully qualified domain name of the ASA's inside interface. Instead of having me log in with a username and password, I've been given a prompt to select a certificate to authenticate with. Since this is my only user certificate, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. After providing the certificate and clicking the Login button, it takes me right in and allows me to download AnyConnect. Let's go ahead and install this really quickly and see what happens. So I already have AnyConnect installed on this endpoint, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to open up AnyConnect and try to connect to the fully qualified domain name of my ASA interface. It'll prompt me to select the group and will let me connect to the VPN right away. In the background, the ASA was authenticating the client with its user certificate without the user ever actually seeing it or having to type in credentials themselves. Now I'm going to pull up my ASA command line and issue the show VPN session DB detail any connect command. We can see from this output that the authentication mode for this connection was certificate. Now let's go ahead and enable logging really quickly. I'm going to have it logged to console, which might make things a little noisier as we debug, but it'll give us a lot of good details. So I'm going to go ahead and start some debugs. I'm going to do debug web VPN any connect 255 and debug crypto CA 255 and debug web VPN 255. Now I'm going to go back to my VPN client and disconnect and reconnect via VPN. After doing so, let's swing back to the ASA command line and take a look at the debugging output. Looking at the debugging output, we can see the extended key usage for this user certificate that allows us to use it for SSL VPN. I can also see that the endpoint presented a certificate that was issued from the AD-CA-ROOTCA that we trust. 
and scrolling down further we can see that the UPN was found in the certificate. And with that I'm going to shut off all debugging. So I'm going to go ahead and issue the show VPN database any connect command. We can see the username on the top being displayed. That's the UPN that's been extracted from the certificate as per our settings. And with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching.